<clears throat> let's start at the top here. Let's start talking about low carbohydrate diets because as you know, there is a lot of confusion about the benefits and the risks of low carbohydrate diets for people living with type one diabetes and people living with type two diabetes. So you've right. talked previously about low, how low carbohydrate diets actually can shorten your lifespan. Can you go into a little bit of detail about why this actually occurs? Yes, it's a little bit complicated, but the first thing we have to say is that certainly with type one and type two diabetes, we want people to eat a diet that is glycemically favorable and we want their, you know, so that's important if it's glycemically favorable, but that's not the only criteria we want is glycemically favorable because that's the only criteria, then we can, you know, we want to also a diet that's lifespan favorable, that's slowing the aging process. That'll protect the brain from aging and becoming demented and it'll protect from getting cancer. All those things are important, not just glycemically favorable. The question is, can we put together recommendations that utilize every aspect of nutritional excellence that promotes human longevity to maximize our time, on the, to, full, to fully fuel mental function, to keep our mental faculties in our later years, to not get cancer, and to maximize human longevity. And the advances in nutritional science make this possible today. We can do better than our ancestors did. We can live to be 100 years old with great health and great physical and mental health. So to put that into context now with your question, what's in vogue today is a lot of ketogenic diets, high protein diets, paleo type diets, because people note when they restrict carbohydrates, need a diet higher in animal products, those foods generally are glycemically favorable because animal products don't raise glucose as much as carbohydrates do. At least as some carbohydrates do, let's talk, say that. The problem is, is that we have to look at the whole picture and we have to look at, give certain studies credence that follow thousands of people for decades and look at hard endpoints versus soft endpoints. A soft endpoint might be your triglycerides went down, your glucose got a little better, you lost some weight, those are soft endpoints. A hard endpoint is you had a heart attack, you stroked out, you or you died. The number one hard endpoint, the hardest endpoint would be death. So if we look at studies that we give more credence to, which go on for decades, maybe 10, 20, or 30 years with large numbers of people, we see that as you ratchet up the animal protein in, direct, in a direct relationship between more animal protein, we see more heart attack deaths and more cancer deaths. We also see more, diet, more earlier death in diabetic populations as they eat more animal protein as well. And there's a lot of reasons why. One main reason is that increased animal protein in your diet drives a hormone called IGF-1, and that's insulin-like growth factor one. And it's called insulin-like because it's a growth hormone like insulin. It promotes fat storage. It promotes body growth. And when we're not growing anymore and we're adults, higher levels of IGF-1 speed up the aging process and speeds up aging of the brain. And they also, so, and it makes the little carbohydrate you eat more fattening if IGF-1 is elevated when insulin goes up. So IGF-1, um, it, what, how can I say, it revs up insulin to work better. Insulin becomes more angiogenic, and IGF-1 is, angi is an angiogenic hormone, but it makes the effects of insulin more angiogenic. The word angiogenesis means the growth of new blood vessels to fuel the growth of body mass, body tissues. So fat cells secrete angiogenesis, angiogenic promoters to, to say to blood vessels, grow into me so I can live and I can grow more. In other words, angiogenesis promotes fat growth and it promotes diabetes. So what I'm saying here is that meat eating, eating more animal protein, promotes angiogenesis and promotes fat storage on the body and makes anything you eat, makes the oil more fat, fattening and makes the carbohydrate more fattening. So it, makes, so it makes the other foods you're eating more fattening, number one, but number two, regardless of its effects on causing the other foods to become more fattening, it still has an effect to age us at a more rapid pace and to shorten our lifespan from, like, by increasing all-cause mortality. Now, in the, natu in the natural world, <clears throat> we have animals that are predators and we have animals that are prey. Predatory animals eat other animals. Now, those animals have a control, have a governor control in their lifespan based on how many prey animals they eat. If they overeat the prey animals, 
nature shortens their lifespan precipitously because they don't want the prey to become extinct. Because if the prey animals become extinct by the overconsumption of them by the predators, then the predators will die out because they won't have any, any animals to eat. So let's, let's take, for example, the, um, the Arctic hare and the lynx. Okay, so the lynx is a cat that eats Arctic hares as their sole source of food. And if they start to eat too many hares, they're like, by the increased protein, the increased animal protein, raising up hormones that speed up the aging process will shorten their lifespan. Now, that will allow the hares to reproduce and come back into life so that they will support the lynx population. But it's not enough because it takes a few generations for the hares to come back. So what happens in nature is that it affects the genes. So it doesn't just shorten lifespan of the lynx, it often shortens lifespan of their children and grandchildren. For the three generations we have shortened lifespan because the excess consumption of animal protein from the lynx. This, we see the same thing with every animal we study. Even if we study an, um, carnivores, omnivores, or primarily frugivores, we see the same thing built into all species that as we, if we can feed an animal and ratchet up their animal protein, in other words, we're talking about biologically complete protein. More biologically complete protein means accelerating the aging process, speeding up the metabolism, the, the aging process that, you know, metabolism is the rate at which we're aging. So we age fast, shorten lifespan, and of course, has the effect to inc make, increase our susceptibility to the diseases of aging, like blood vessel disease and cancer. So, so what you're saying is that the exact same rules apply to human beings as well, except we, you know, given the human beings, we can domesticate animals, right? We can, we can, uh, you know, we're not susceptible to, you know, the number of animals that are present in uh, nature because we can basically domesticate more. So if we were living in a truly natural world, then we would see the exact same relationship whereby overconsumption of animal based products would then shorten human lifespan and leave more prey, but that's not happening in, in, in our world. No, no, but it's, it's worse than that because animals that are naturally designed to be eating a high plant diet, like bright primates and like humans, because we're, we have, we can see color, we can taste sweet. We have a primate heritage where our diet is supposed to contain a huge amount of phytochemicals and antioxidants to support a long life. Whereas all animals that eat primarily animal products, mostly predatory animals have short lifespan because they age much quicker. So what I'm saying is that animal protein ages humans faster and is more dangerous for a human than it would be for a true omnivore or a true carnivore, even though their lifespans would be naturally shortened. They're designed to eat that food so they can better, have a better chance of meeting their normally predicted lifespan than a human. Now, we have the ability to live to 100 years old. We can be, we can, it's no reason why with the knowledge we have today, with the knowledge on blue zones, with the knowledge on advanced nutritional science, we can't all live in good health. Most of us live in good health to 100 years old. And certainly that's impossible to do on a diet rich in animal products. If your goal is to be 75 or 80, then probably you can do that on a healthy diet with animal products. But, but if you're going to want to push to 100 years old, your chance of living to 100 years old on a diet high in animal products is incredibly small because of a lot of factors going on. Also, the bacteria that grow in the gut when you eat more animal products, you grow inflammatory type bacteria that promote, you know, TMAO, you know, trimethylamine oxide, that is a natural inflammatory that accelerates atherosclerosis. When you live on foods that promote back, um, healthy bacteria growth, and I, I consider these four foods that promote the healthy bacteria growth, because when you eat more raw greens, and raw onion and scallion, and we eat more cooked beans and cooked mushrooms. So we're talking here, two raw foods, two cooked foods. The two raw foods are, I'll repeat again, are green leafy vegetables and scallion and onion. Um, uh, yes, yeah, so those are two raw foods. The two cooked foods are cooked beans and lentils and mushrooms, cooked. That, those foods thicken an adherent biofilm to adhere to the villi, and they slow the glycemic effect of other foods we eat. So when we eat a mango or we eat oatmeal, the glycemic effect of that mango is lessened because we regularly consume these foods that led to a thickening of this adherent biofilm that slows the absorption of glucose through the villi. When we eat a diet that's rich in animal products, the opposite happens because the type of bacteria, and sweets of course, but the type of bacteria that develop don't, don't inhibit and don't adhere well to the, to the villi, causing the adherent 
biofilm that takes up permanent residence there, see there. We want these, these bacteria, so it's not just taking probiotics or taking the fermented foods, it's eating the foods that make the biofilm more adherent and, more, and taking up a more permanent residence to lower the glycemic effect of your diet in general. 